Hey guys, Mike here. So, oh boy, you might have noticed a little volatility today, and now you know why I don't go over a lot of charts during FOMC week, and especially when it aligns with big mega cap earnings, because it is a waste of time. That is why I'm telling you, the market's going to go where it wants to go off this news. And so, what was the theme of the day? Well, they're going to talk about rate cuts. He was asked 10 ways from Sunday about these rate cuts and people trying to get information out of him. And he was a lot more upfront than I thought he would be. I got to be honest, right? Maybe caught the market off guard. Who knows? But I think we kind of saw some of this coming. But when you look, I got, you know, I like to break down. He talks for 58 minutes. So I broke down three of the most important parts, took 58 minutes, put it down to like maybe a minute and 50 seconds or something for you to listen to. And, you know, then we were going to some other things that happened this morning, which that it definitely took the market off guard. Uh, I don't know if you saw this. Most likely not. Uh, so I'll show that to you. Plus, why Tesla actually sold down in after hours last night. It had nothing to do with Elon Musk's money. Uh, it had something to do with something else that came out. And we'll look at a few other charts like AMD, uh, Microsoft, Google, uh, those charts as well. But when you look you know, at what he said, the fir first question was, right out of the gates, of course, you know, are you guys going to be cutting rates? Right? What are you guys looking at rate cut stuff? And this is what he had to say on the first uh, question on that. As you know, um, uh Almost every participant on the committee does believe that it will be appropriate to reduce rates. And uh, for, for partly for the reasons that you say, you know, we, we feel like inflation is coming down. Uh, growth has been strong. The labor market is strong. Um, we're, what we're trying to do is identify a place where we're really confident about inflation, get it going back down 2 percent so that we can then begin uh, the process of dialing back the restrictive level. Uh, so. Overall, I think I think people do believe, and as you know, the median participant wrote down three rate cuts this year. Uh, but uh, I think to get to that place where we feel comfortable starting the process, we need some confirmation that inflation is in fact coming down. And then here's the second question about rate cuts, which he gets a little more blunt about. There was no proposal to cut rates. Uh, some people did, you know, talk about their view of the rate path. I would point you to the SEP. Uh, as as uh, you know, as good evidence of where people are, although it is it is one cycle later. So, you know, we, we are we're not we're not at a place of of really working out those kinds of details because we weren't actively considering you know a, a, a moving moving the federal funds rate down. And then finally, this is the answer where the market finally said, "Let's go ahead and take this baby down." Based on the meeting today, I would tell you that. I don't think it's likely that the committee will reach a level of confidence by the time of the March meeting to identify March as the time to do that. But that's that's to be seen. Um, so I wouldn't call, uh, you know, when you say when you ask me about in the near term, I'm hearing that as March. I would say uh, I don't think that's it's probably not the most likely case or what we would call the base case. And that was right around this area right here. We finally got this area and said, ah, let's go ahead and sell this puppy down and go red for the day. Uh, and I mean, really red. And of course, IWM I put up here because that's the one most affected by these rate cuts, right? And the most rate sensitive uh, type of area. But something else to happen, you might have noticed that regional banks were extremely red when we opened up this morning. And especially a certain uh, regional bank, which the ticker symbol is nycb right straight down 46 percent because it came out with a surprise loss and they're going to cut their dividend by 70 percent which is not what people like to hear so people are like oh man are, are they in trouble too and of course you know why is this important and guys before we continue if you hit that thumbs up i'd surely appreciate it. it helps people find the video and if you like the content think about subscribing because as we've talked about in the past if regional banks do not continue to rally IWM most likely will not rally either because there's a lot of regional banks on it also has a lot of small tech companies okay a lot of them unprofitable which we're going to look at in just a minute but when you look at the chart on this one obviously once it came up grab liquidity and sold back down pretty much just stopped right there once it filled the RTH gap gap between the 0.5 and almost to the golden pocket uh, on the fibs and everything like that and when we kind of pull out a little bit here you'll see right here we'll draw this trend line we'll see if this holds up this is where it stopped was right at this trend line so we'll see if we get this bounce but i mean on the daily what do you see you see lower highs right there right but you don't see the lower lows so we'll see if we get this bounce right here uh pretty good level to bounce if it is going to bounce but if regional banks continue weakness small caps the tech companies continue weakness 
then that is going to be a problem. And when these, if these rate cuts don't happen, you know, that's part of the problem. And you can see, I mean, obviously it wasn't just IWM. I mean, everything, mega caps, especially tech, like tech's rate sensitive, right? That took the brunt of it. What was the best performing? All of them, and they're still red, but it was defensive. It was consumer discretionary, utilities, healthcare, right? Three things you got to have no matter how bad the economy is. And so those were actually uh, doing the best, even though the sectors are red. There were still some stocks that were green on that. Now, going into Tesla here, you can see gap down. I'll talk about that in just a minute, why it gap down. But it recovered very quickly. Again, dip buyers swarming in, got to uh, fill that RTH gap pretty quickly. I mean, I guess before lunch, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and then came back up. You notice it keeps going above the weekly expected move and then selling back down, right? So again, in the weekly expected move, it can go above it. But it's expected to end up between, I believe it's 176, 193. And it ends up within the what the option market think it's going to do. It ends between those two levels about 70, 72% of the time, I believe it is. So pretty high rate of it. So we'll see if it can continue above that or not. It just ends up there. But when you pull up, you know, the RSI, the MACD on this one right here, we talked about what? You know, it has to settle out. It usually takes between five and 10 days sometimes, right? Figure out what direction it's going to go. It looks like, I mean, and what's crazy, look at the RSI. It is still oversold even after that move up off 179, right? MACD looks like it wants to curl up, right? And start the momentum up and everything. But, you know, we've talked about this the last few days. That, that's what we got to figure out. It could just stay in a range between 179 uh, and, you know, 193, somewhere in there maybe. If that's the case because you can see on the hourly, what are you doing? You're doing it looks like a bearish MACD crawl trying to turn over, right? Roll over that momentum is. But you can see, I mean, there's the range. And so that's why you got to kind of figure out. We had some call sweeps coming in early this morning. Of course, that faded. And so, again, still hadn't filled that RTH gap uh, that started during earnings. But what really brought this down, a lot of people think it was because some judge overturned Elon Musk's like, compensation package from a long time ago. I really think it had to do with California. And it just had to do with the registrations, right? For the like, It dropped 10%. And that hadn't happened in more than three years. And so, and remember, California is the EV capital for the United States by a mile. And so that that's a big deal if registrations are coming in lower because why? Tesla's the EV king, right? Especially in America. So if they're slowing, you know the rest of the company's got to be slowing too. And it just kind of goes with that narrative of, oh boy, look, there's still this slowing in EVs. And if it's happening in California, you know it's got to be happening in other places. Okay, that's kind of the narrative. But I think that's why you saw the gap down, even though, again, dip buyers were strong in it. Now, you look at AMD right here. I mean, obviously sold off during earnings. Their guidance, what, what people thought. You see, it looks like they all want to roll over. You see this MACD on all of these stocks I'm about to cover. Looks like they kind of want to roll over. There's trend line right here. We'll see if that holds up. It actually does coincide with a nice support level. I'm going to see if I can pull the moving averages here. And I was going to see if the 50 was up there by now, but it's not. So, again, we had talked about this rubber band effect, right? And so and you can see how it's kind of stair-stepped up that trend line. So we'll see if it still can, comes down and, and continues to roll over. And you see Google the same way on the MACD, right? It's up selling down. That trend line, we'll see if it holds right there around like 138. But it looks like the MACD wants to try to roll over. The RSI is below 50. It got hammered uh, after earnings because it, it did not do top and bottom line. Uh, but again, this and you see it right here. The same thing happened there, right? We had this gap down and gap down again. And then started to recover. So we'll see if we get you know a couple more days of moving down, or if we get a real a real rollover, right? Because we're going into February, which we'll talk about uh, as well. But you know, when we come up here, we we'll draw this other trend line right here. We'll see if that holds. That's where it stopped. We'll see if it gets that bounce right there. Uh, looking at Microsoft again, another one. You know, sold off. This one right here actually had good earnings. It was weird. It went green, red, green, red. It was the mission of the market makers to destroy premiums for anybody who bought the weekly options. I'm sure. Uh, let me know if you, you did in the comments down there. And you see the MACD looks like it wants to roll over right here. Again, we'll draw a trend line. You can see I mean, all of them the charts look basically the same. It's got a couple bounces off this. We'll see if it comes down that trend line or not, which actually would coincide with that level right there of around 384. Uh, so that would be interesting to see if it does move down there. Uh, and then, of course, you know, so far, again, we had earnings the other day. I'm just covering this because somebody asked me to. And this is what we're talking about. I forgot who said in the comments, you know, it usually sells off after a big jump like this. And it's only probably a few percent away from giving up all those earnings gains. Again, though, just keep the big picture of the weekly on this one still wedging. Okay. Now, something important about February to pay attention to is we are obviously ended up with a green January, right? 
And so this talks about, this hardly ever happens, which shocks me. It's only like three times. This will be the fourth time now, right? Where we had no Santa Claus rally because what happened at the end of December, early January, the first five days were negative, right? But you had a green January. And you can kind of see what happens, the January return, right? Those were green. So now we got to figure out the full year return. You had in 1985, it was 26%, 91, 26%, 93, 7%. So this is going to be the fourth time so we'll see if we get another green one or not obviously this is kind of a uh, a rare thing to happen you can see how rare it is and now talking about earnings tomorrow again this is you got the travel stocks peloton but then the big ones in the afternoon the only ones that matter right apple amazon meta my guess is meta does good I, apple's apple i, I can't imagine it's going to show much growth and a lot of people are betting on amazon but you know again right now even with microsoft reporting good earnings they're selling the stock down right now, okay? Now, again, you'll have economic data before the market opens up. A lot of jobless claims data is going to come out. Then you're going to end up with S&P Global Manufacturing, which has been garbage. ISM Manufacturing, uh, again, the manufacturing data has been horrible. We'll see if we get any improvement on this one. And so obviously with all that economic data and those mega cap earnings, it's going to be another volatile day for sure. Put in the bottom what you think is going to happen to those three mega cap stocks again. I'm betting Meta goes up, Amazon's a big question mark, and Apple, of course, the most heavily owned stock in the world, doesn't guide, and their growth has sucked over the last, what, three earnings? And so I, I'm going to say it sells down at first, and then it'll recover maybe next week or something. That's going to be my guess on that one. But, you know, that's what earnings are, nothing but a, a gamble, and you're trying to guess, because, like I said, Microsoft had good earnings, and went up, went 5%, went down, 5%, went flat, went all this stuff, and because you got to remember, they're going to... A lot of people, they, the market makers do not want to pay out those premiums. So a lot of people are paying those, playing those weekly options. And so the way to crush your options is to make sure it doesn't reach that expected move, especially if it just stays flat. That's the worst thing for you. And so let me know if you were in Microsoft or any of the rest of those and stuff. And, and for example, you got something like Starbucks. They report garbage earnings, right? End up going like 4% out of the gates this morning and then selling off the rest of the day. And so and, and so you can't make heads or tails of that, right? That's just the market doing what it wants to do and the market makers doing what they want to do. So anyway, hope you guys got something out of it. Hit that like and subscribe button. Really appreciate it, guys. And I will see you tomorrow.